We're gonna show you some fun lighting tips and tricks like how to actually make steam show up, how to contain errant light so it doesn't affect the contrast of your shot, and things you can do with my old buddy Black Wrap Cineform right here. Oh yeah. And if you shoot food videos, you're gonna love all of these. salad ready yet? Honey? Welcome to Pull My Focus, adventures in the world of digital filmmaking where we give you the inside tips you need on producing great video. Over time you learn certain tricks of the trade and they stay with you and become habits. And I found that they're not always taught because they're just habits. You just do them without thinking about them. I've collected a few here that kind of all tie in together and I think they're going to be helpful. Steam and smoke, like liquids, are transparent slash semi-transparent, and you can't light them from the front, well, because light goes right through them. But there is a way to make them show up, and it's the same trick that we used uh, in our previous video on lighting liquids, and that is to light them from behind, particularly three-quarter back. The reason why this works is because anything that's transparent, semi-transparent, some of the light going through it will actually bounce around and illuminate that object, whether it's liquid, steam, smoke, ice cube, whatever it is. It's kind of like those acetate clocks or artwork where it's a piece of clear plastic lit from below and it sort of illuminates itself and whatever's carved or put in it. Here I have a small LED PAR on a dimmer focused on this steaming cup. I turn it on full blast, then dim it down to the level that I like. To see how it looks, looks good. But a potential problem, the light is close to the edge of my frame and therefore has a good chance of spilling light into my lens and maybe even giving me a lens flare. But the bigger issue really is the light spill that you probably don't even notice. How so? Look here into the lens. See this light spilling into it from that backlight? All that light is bouncing around inside my lens and lowering the contrast of my shot and in some cases, maybe lowering it only in certain areas of my shot. This is a familiar look when you're filming into a window, uh, the sky, or some other bright source, but when you're not, uh, it may not be desirable. It's basically flashing your sensor, filling in the shadows and darker areas of your shot, and to some degree, lowering your contrast. But note, this is an actual thing that DPs do, uh, but in a more controlled way, and it's called flashing. There was a unit called Lightflex, Airy bought it, and now it's called Vericon. It's basically glass that sits in front of your lens with a, a light attached to one end that you control. It's a way of adjusting the contrast in your shot in the shadows and darker areas without adding any grain, which can happen in post if you just increase those levels. I'll put a link for more info to a video by DP Rob Draper, who talks a little bit more about when he uses it, um, in what situations and whatnot. He shows some examples. Rob Draper, who I worked with a very long time ago, in the early 90s on Tales from the Dark Side. No, was it Tales from the Crypt? But as I said, that's a controlled and deliberate way of flashing. On set, we want to get rid of any errant light that's shining into our lens with what grips call a lenser. Grip set a flag, a lenser, uh, to do that, or in our case, I'm going to use black wrap around this LED PAR to make sure it's only shining where I want, which is on the steam, and make sure it takes the light off the lens. But you know what? As I look at the shot, I realize I really only want the light on the steam. I don't want it anywhere else if I can help it, including the cup. How do I do that? This brings us to black wrap, also called cinefoil, which you've probably heard me mention in previous videos. What is it? It's thick aluminum with an anodized black coating so it doesn't shine light all over the place. And it's used uh, on set to wrap hot lights around the barn doors to 
contain any errant light spilling all over the place on your set and potentially in your lens. But it has many other uses because of how malleable it is, like becoming a barn door for our LED PAR to take the spill off the lens. But it can also go a step further and become what we call a snoot. A snoot is basically a tube instead of barn doors that only allow light in just one area. With black wrap, I create a tube around the LED and then adjust it so it just lights the steam rising up from my cup. If I need to, I can use paper tape to fine tune it. On set, black wrap is what we call an expendable, like diffusion and gels, clothespins and whatnot. Items that are expendable, you use them and you toss them away. But in uh, independent filmmaking and for us content creators, well, uh, we call it gold. And we, we keep every single sheet. We keep every single sheet. Don't throw it away. You'll reuse it, it lasts forever. Love this stuff. I'm used to using 12 inch wide rolls. It also comes in 24 inch and even wider. I don't know why you would need something so big or how you could afford it. Uh, it comes in lengths of 10 feet all the way up to 50. I recommend 10 to 25 feet lengths. Uh, it'll last you a bit of a while depending on your use. Uh, and we have some affiliate links in the description below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out pullmyfocus.tv for the companion articles that go with our, our videos. And make sure to check out uh, all the other videos that we have. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Any other tips that you have that we may have missed or that we could elaborate on. Thanks for watching. Oh, very loud, very loud.